Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. And today I'm going to do the June garden tour. Oh, also, I have some things that need to be harvested, so I figured I would leave them for this garden tour. It is still pretty early in the morning. On the walk into the garden, I have this wonderful um, wind chime that says welcome. Um, there is supposed to be a yellow door here, and there is a yellow door. It's over there because it broke. <laughs> but anywho, walking into the garden, you have this beautiful butterfly uh, pea flower. They are good um, as a tea um, and also as food coloring. I have not tried them yet. These are the first few that are growing. Um, so it, it got started kind of slow. But anywho, that's gonna go up the trellis and I should have beautiful blue flowers. And then you have loofah. There's two loofah plants growing in this space right up the trellis. Um, and I actually have a loofah. Let's see if we can find it. There it goes. Right there. Um, and then beside that, you have amaranth that's getting a little ate up by the bugs, but not too bad. So it's a beautiful flower. Um, I'm gonna try to use this for grain this year. It's, I only have one um, and it's my first time growing it. So we'll see what happens. I will be excited if it does grow and next year, I'll grow more. The next trellis um, is beans. And so there are purple potted pole beans on here. I have already um, harvested some of these and actually some of these that's on here can go ahead and be harvested. So I'm gonna harvest those few and the way I do this is I go ahead and harvest them and I put them in a Ziploc bag in my refrigerator um, sometimes with a paper towel a wet paper towel and I save them until I have enough to either blanch them or to um, go ahead and have a, a meal so a few beans to your right after you come through the trellises we have a space with a um, with the cattle panel trellis and I am growing my cherry tomatoes on that trellis and so from my my left <laughs> you have a super sweet 100 cherry tomato Try again. no Siri I'm not talking to you okay you have a Brad's atomic grape here you have a green zebra those are really delicious they're mild flavor and a little bit tangy and i love a tangy tomato i'm not for acid i like tangy and i like sweet and the green zebra were uh they had a nice tangy flavor to them uh next you have the cherry black and we actually have tomatoes growing on all of these uh the cherry black are pretty big they're delicious very prolific um they're they're sweet tomato um then you have the sun peach also very prolific variety last year and they were also very good to eat um, i snacked a lot on those down here we have our first set of blushing tomatoes and these are sun gold and if you've been around the gardening community for any amount of time you know everyone grows sun golds they are delicious and um they're very sweet like one of the sweetest tomatoes i've ever tasted Right next to the Sun Gold is an artisan bumblebee. And I don't know which color it is. When you purchase the packs, they come with three packs in it with the colors. Um, and so I sold each color, uh, but I only kept one. I believe I only kept one. If there's any more, they're over there somewhere. Uh, so that'll be some color, either purple, pink, or I think red, I'm not sure. Um, and then next to that is a super sweet 100. Those are supposed to be really sweet tomatoes um, and they should grow a whole lot. Um, I was not successful in growing those last year and so I'm happy to see tomatoes growing on this plant. At the bottom of that same bed that has the cherry tomatoes, um, I have marigolds that get huge and so I was hoping that they would stay a little bit smaller, but they did not. Anywho, so have marigolds, they're beautiful. There is some basil stuck in there as well. 
And then there are also sunflowers behind the cherry tomatoes. Um, that sunflower is behind the cherry tomatoes. I covered it with a tool. Someone told me that, someone left that in the comments. Um, and so I did it because we wanna eat those. Um, there's also this daisy plant that's at the end of this bed as well. Uh, daisies get huge. This is a Shasta daisy. I cut it back last week and so it'll grow back. You can see there's buds already forming. <laughs> um, and so we have hollyhocks, which they may be dying back, but they come back every year. So I'm not gonna worry about that. There's a coreopsis, which I also cut back. First echinacea in this row has went ahead and sprouted and it's beautiful. And that's another um, Shasta daisy. We already have some growing. So those will be back. They looked really pretty um, with the hollyhocks. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and point out the potatoes that volunteered over in the old compost bin, just letting them grow. directly behind the tomato bed and beside the lufa blue pea flower trellis is this small orchard area so try to give you a little pan of the size and in here we have a few zinnias so this one has already bloomed and is dying there's one on this side as well, that's been blooming. We have some marjoram down here. Uh, I don't know what you do with marjoram. I just figured I would go ahead and plant it. There is a new thyme plant back here. Next year, that should be pretty awesome. There is rosemary that I started from some rosemary that I got from the store right there. The rest of that is weeds. <laughs> this is my rosemary that I started from seed. So that's taking its time getting started. And then there's comfrey all through this space uh, because I'm using it to fertilize. And I've cut that quite a few times and it just keeps growing back. <laughs> and there's more comfrey. That's the oregano plant that we, one of the oregano plants that we're always cutting together. There is an Italian parsley here by the tree and uh, some more thyme. That thyme is from last year and I've cut that too. Um, this is a muscadine grapevine and it is running up this fence that I had because initially this section of the garden was not here. I added it. <laughs> There's some more rosemary that I propagated from some rosemary that I started, I purchased from the store. And then there's a peach tree, a peach tree, an apple tree and an apple tree. Someone said this is rust. Um, I have not done anything to it as of now. The tree still looks pretty healthy. Um, I'm not actually growing fruit on the trees this year. So I'm just letting it go at this point. <laughs> hope that hope that doesn't come back to bite me. Um, there is sage down here, volunteer potato, um, tarragon right here, more oregano and a bolted Italian parsley and a new Italian parsley is down there. This is a raspberry, which I've eaten like two raspberries off of it. It is huge. I'm thinking I may have to move that, um, dig it up when the season is over, maybe even put it in a container because it is huge. Um, and I know it will take over your space. And if you Remember me saying that's what I wanted this space to be, like this huge overgrown space. But this is overgrown to the point that I can barely walk in this area. So we'll see what happens there. This is a regular parsley that has bolted and gone to seed and I'm just letting it flower. Over here are rose bushes. Um, so they have bloomed and died and they're about to bloom again. So that'll be nice. I cut these way back in the early spring, I think. I think it was early spring. Um, and so they're just coming on back. There's lavender back here, but I think it's getting shaded 
quite a bit at this point. I have harvested off of it though. There is another rose bush that has, um, like I said, bloomed and about to bloom again. So, oh, there's a raspberry. Yeah, nice. I'll have that for a snack. But I'm gonna pull that raspberry and plant it somewhere else, regardless, because I can't really get around it. Um, and I also probably need to figure out something right here so that I don't have to slide between the shed and the trees to get over there. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, oh my God, that was sweet. Very nice. Directly across from the cherry tomatoes um, and from the orchard area are my seven gallon bags where I am growing tomatoes in and you can see we have tomatoes. Um, so <laughs> if you're a gardener, you know, you'll put something out and you'll say, I'll remember how it's labeled. But that does not always happen. So um, just gonna try to remember as best I can. So this is a mortgage lifter here. So I believe both of these are mortgage lifters. Uh, this is a pink girl back here. And there are two pink girls on there. Um, and I think that's what these two plants are. This is my fever few. Back here are Dr. Weiches, and we have tomatoes growing on those. Back here are Mr. Stripies, these two. And this one is a great white. I have bags everywhere, and they're seven gallon. I got them off of Amazon. So these are growing really well. I do have a few where my buds are dropping and it may be because it's hot. <laughs> Sometimes your flowers will drop if it is too hot. Um, and the way I'm growing these, in case you are new here, is I am growing them up one stake. In some cases I missed a sucker and so I have double leader plants too. Double leader just means you have your main stem and then you have another stem. Um, and so I just let them both grow because I missed it and they were really big at that point. Um, but there aren't a lot like that. So right here, my beautiful tomatoes, I'm gonna show you them. <laughs> That's a mortgage lifter. I think this is a mortgage lifter too, if I'm honest about uh, my labeling. Those are pink girls, Dr. Weiches. Uh, back here are the stripies, and then that one looks a little cat-faced, but I'm leaving it. And uh, like I said, I believe this is also, yeah, I don't think I labeled that right. That looks nothing like the Mr. Stripies. So we'll see what it is. Beautiful tomato is what it is right now. <laughs> right behind the tomatoes that's growing in the bags are strawberries. I don't have any right now. If you are not new here, oh, I do have some. There's one right there. I'm gonna leave it for a day or two, but I have one, I don't have some. Uh, but these are the strawberries, but they're looking really good. So next year they should be a nice patch of strawberries. Um, they are perennial, they will come back. And then you have all the runners that are coming out around the bed. Uh, and I may grab them because I heard that asparagus can grow with strawberries. So I can get two strawberry beds in this space by planting some of these runners with the asparagus, which I will more than likely do. Right here in the back are potatoes. Um, this is the second round of potatoes. And so they're growing, they flowered, but I pulled the flowers because the flowers are poisonous. They're still growing really good as well. Right here are more potatoes. They're in seven gallon bags. Um, they were planted at the same time as the potatoes back here. So I don't think they'll be ready to harvest until like sometime in August, if I did my calculations correctly. <laughs> I don't remember right off hand what these potatoes are, but I will put them on the screen um, so that you will know what type of potatoes I am growing. Beside the potatoes that are growing in bags is my mostly eggplant. So this is my eggplant bed. Uh, eggplant will grow pretty much right up until your uh, first frost. And so 
I put them in this bed because this is a bed that I will not be using to grow my fall vegetables or to grow through the winter. Um, so they'll just keep growing. And there are quite a few eggplant in here. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest them with you. But what else is in this bed is nasturtium. So there's a nasturtium here, a nasturtium on the other side. And then there are marigolds in this bed as well. Um, this bed, I believe is 16, I mean, four by four, so 16 square feet. So. Eggplant, nice size too. I prefer the skinny varieties of eggplant. So that's the eggplant harvest. Um, I'm gonna put those together and roast those tonight and I'm going to eat them uh the marigold over here is also huge <laughs> but it's so pretty so like i really like having them in my garden they just get really big oh there's also swiss chard in this bed and that swiss chard is from last year's fall garden um, and i just moved it when it was time to plant for summer directly behind and beside the eggplant bed are more tomatoes in the seven gallon bags um, so these are Amish paste, which are, um, look at that one. It's a really nice size Amish paste tomato, but there's quite a few growing on here. Uh, this is also an Amish paste. I'm gonna hopefully make some sauce. And then right here, we have a black elephant plant. And I wanna show you, look how big that one is already. So very nice. There's quite a few growing on here and this one ended up there's another one uh being a two liter plant so there's one on this side too that i just added a stake to here's more and that's my favorite that's a cherokee purple most of my trellises have sunflowers on them um it's how i'm making sure that i don't have sunflowers flopping around everywhere so i tie i plant them by the trellis and i also tie them to the trellis so we have sunflowers that have bloomed and um i have died and are being eaten by the birds which i don't mind the ones that i want to keep to either save for seed or um eat <laughs> i have covered with tools on this trellis are cucumbers week before last i said i didn't have any cucumbers that's not true anymore there are cucumbers popping up everywhere uh, but a little more of what's going on in this bed and then i'll show you the cucumbers is here we have borage. Borage is a very prolific flower. It gets huge um, and it's very good for the pollinators. So I, pl I planted borage in this bed in hopes that it would carry the bees and everybody else to the cucumbers in which they seem that seems to be working. There are um, African daisies, which a few have bloomed. They're beautiful. I'll bring you in closer in a little bit. Um, there's marigolds that don't seem to be go doing that well in this bed, so, but I'm not upset about it. <laughs> then there's basil down here as well. On the opposite side are cucumbers, um, and behind it are artichoke, two artichoke plants. And then there's a straw flower that I threw in there as well. So let me take you off this tripod and show you my new cucumbers. There's cucumber, the largest one is there, so that'll be growing soon. Then there's more all down here. Where is it? There it goes. There's more down here as well. Um, and just to show you sunflowers, there's a sunflower on each side. That one is huge. And it's tied to the trellis. The other thing on the other side of this bed is my sweet potatoes, which at a point was getting ate up pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but that seems to have stopped. Um, these will have taken over this whole entire space by the time that it's time to harvest them. And they won't be harvested until like late fall. So that's why I put them over here because they're over by the fence. I don't walk this way much anyway let me show you that's the african daisy they're planted at the ends of the beds there you go and the artichoke plants that's in the back 
Um, and then that's just one little straw flower. <laughs> Also, this trellis is housing um, some potted strawberries um, that I potted up at this time of year. And it's better to do them either early spring or late um, or in fall, but they're perennial. So if I don't get good greenery or any strawberries, I'm not going to be worried because they'll come back next year. Right beside the trellis with the cucumbers are more tomatoes that are in seven gallon pots. These two are Paul Robeson right here and then this is actually a white tonsil which i have two white tomatoes don't know which one i liked the best last year so i'm growing them again well labeled <laughs> so i will know uh, back here is a hillbilly right here i don't have many tomatoes on that one yet um this is a pineapple um We'll have to walk around. There's also a fever few inside of here. Using it for pollinators. We had talked about that before. So this is a heritage rainbow. This is a pink beef steak. This was my first um, slicing tomato that, that came up. So that's my first baby. She holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> this is another heritage rainbow. And this is a yellow beefsteak. There's nothing on this one just yet. The beefsteak tomatoes seem to be later blooming. I have beefsteaks in other places. Another pineapple. And it has some tomatoes on it. So this little spot is doing well. So I wanna show you something that's not doing well at all. And I have pulled it out from around the rest of the tomatoes. Um, I am pretty sure this is maybe blight. So I pulled the plant out. This was, or is, this is a pink beefsteak. Um, it's, it's not doing well at all. And the top of it has actually the blight on it. So I pulled it out of the group. They, it was in this group over here, the tomatoes I just showed you. Um, and I am going to see what happens with it. If nothing, I cut off the main leader because that one was even worse. And I figured maybe we could get some side shoots, but I'm only gonna give it a little while because I don't want it to spread. But just showing you, I have things that's going wrong in my garden as well. <laughs> Coming on through to the next trellis is the trellis where I have my winter squash growing. And I have been very much paying attention to these. I have been pulling off squash bugs pretty much every day um, but we do have some squash this is a kombucha squash um, said it's ready when it sounds hollow does it sound that hollow to me also I have a volunteer uh, it's gotta be a ground cherry uh, because I didn't get two tomatillo uh, plants last year so I didn't get any fruit so this has got to be a ground cherry but it volunteered and so I kind of left it there we go right there just gonna show you squash bug eggs so I've been watching that I've been killing squash bugs and their eggs <laughs> so coming through this trellis we have a banana boat squash right here um, and then there's this one that I never can remember the name of. And this time I will actually remember to put it on the screen for you all. <laughs> uh, but those are growing up the trellis. I'm not seeing a lot of new fruiting flowers or female flowers, but we have a long ways to go. <laughs> and so there's the other kombucha that I've showed you before. Other things going on in this bed is borage that kept falling over, so I staked it. Um, like I said, the volunteer tomate, uh, ground cherry, there's basil. I think it was lemon basil. It's already gone to seed. I still haven't gotten this space replanted. I did put some, um, I think it's the scallop squash seeds in here. They haven't come up yet. Um, but I also want to put some Swiss chard in there. On the back end of that same bed, there are two dahlias, a zinnia and sunflowers going up that uh these were extras so that's where i put them they seem to be thriving you have basil over here more basil not sure which i think that's holy holy basil holy tulsi 
Um, and there's a basil plant down in there and there's some deal. This section could stand some some love. <laughs> they didn't have time to do that just yet. Um, yeah, like the borage. The borage is a monster sometimes. Yeah, that's that section. <laughs> Coming into the garden, you have all the seven gallon pots with the peppers in them. Peppers are only grown in pots around here because they will stay until your first frost. So right here we have Jimmy Nardello, another Jimmy Nardello. These are paprika. So there's quite a few paprikas growing here. This is another paprika. It has a really big one in there. So excited about that. And then you have shishito. They were delicious. Somewhat spicy, a little spicy, um, but I blistered them and they were delicious. This is another shishito pepper plant with lots of shishito peppers. This is also a shishito pepper plant. Uh, it struggled, but it finally grew. <laughs> we have yellow bell pepper right there. And there's a new one coming in on that. Hungarian wax pepper in here. Knots of peppers. Across, you have a pepper that I labeled large red pepper. This is clearly <laughs> not a large red pepper. So I don't know what that is. If you maybe see if I can get a better video, video. There we go. So if you maybe know what that is, leave me a comment in the box below. <laughs> uh, right here you have cayenne long. And there are some growing on here. You have banana peppers here. It's a pimento pepper. And they are starting to grow now. And this is the Lycia Legia. I'm not really sure. Where is it? Here it goes. This is the Lysia. Lazia. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, right here you have a golden Marconi. Love these. They are delicious and they get really big. They're very sweet and they get really big. Right here you have another cayenne long that's growing. Jalapeno back here hasn't uh put any jalapenos out this is another jalapeno have flowers no jalapeno um this is poblano both of these are po poblano and this is a jalapeno which i have harvested off already so those are growing those are all of the peppers that i am growing in my garden you also have another bed with a cattle panel trellis which i am growing my melons up um, so that's a cantaloupe. This is a watermelon, and we actually have one that may have been pollinated. I'm sure hoping it was. Um, this is another cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. My daughter loves cantaloupe. Um, that's the same plant. It's another watermelon that has popped up, and this is another cantaloupe. In the front of that bed, also, let me show you this. We have turnips still growing down here. So pretty excited about that. I do love a good turnip. <laughs> uh, down in there, you'll see there are marigolds as well. Um, there are nasturtiums and there are teddy bear sunflowers. Seeing it from the other end, there's also radishes in there, but they're not actually growing. <laughs> More nasturtium, teddy bear sunflowers all the way down. I love this bed. And in front of that bed are blueberry plants. <laughs> that the uh, birds ate. Coming into the garden on the other side of the arch are more beans. I just planted these, so they should be coming up. They are Kentucky Wonder, I believe, pole beans. Um, and then you still have the asparagus forest. Next year, I'm hoping to also have strawberries up under. I think it would be really nice. Uh, the potatoes that we planted together, one is coming up, the other one has not yet. And then we have more potatoes in bags. This is the third sowing of potatoes at this point. The actual raised beds made out of cinder blocks have beans and I have been um, harvesting from these. These are mixed. I'm not really sure exactly what varieties are in here. These are bush beans, so they're gonna grow to a certain height. They're gonna give me the beans I want and then the plant is gonna die out and I will re-sow. 
Uh, this is the echinacea, which I cut back because it got really big. Um, and it may have helped because nothing had budded on here. I didn't even see buds. And now there are buds everywhere on this echinacea plant. So it's huge. If you can see right here, that is a potato. And I told you all that it had uh, volunteered probably from my first garden. <laughs> Over here, I believe is either the squash or the zucchini. I did not label them. The other one is in the other bed. Um, so that is a zucchini or a squash. We have these beautiful nasturtium flowers. I think nasturtium plants are so pretty. Like I like their leaves. I also eat their leaves. <laughs> um, there's basil down in here. Gonna go ahead and pull that top part that's trying to flower. Uh, this huge marigold, there's marigolds everywhere. Um, and these are Ace 55 tomatoes. This is where I was telling you I wasn't seeing a lot of uh, flowers. So I started to, I started to fertilize every week. Um, and so it has helped. You can see like right there, all of those to tomato clusters. So these are determinate tomatoes. They'll grow to a certain amount and give me my fruit. And I may replant. I was I, like, that was my plan, but they're taking longer than I expected. So that might not happen this year. Um, over there is a dying sunflower. It's already dead. <laughs> um, my tromboncino squash, which I'm probably going to go ahead and harvest that today. I fertilized with um, fish emulsion the other day because you can see it's looking a little light green, and that's not what color it was before. Um, on the other side is another tromboncino squash, which is looking yellow. <laughs> so uh, I had harvested my first tromboncino off of that. And you have some more nasturtiums down here. They're not as big. So I'm wondering if maybe this bed has some type of deficiency. I'm not sure. Um, this is either zucchini or squash. You can see the female plant, um, the little vegetable <laughs> on that plant you can see the little vegetable so maybe getting some squash soon i'm not sure actually there's two in there so that's exciting same thing bed of beans um so i've been harvesting off of those i'm happy about that i love beans and then i planted more back here you can see a couple coming up those are rutabaga um that i just planted in hopes and then you have Roma tomatoes growing back here too. And the flower bed is looking very nice. Uh, we don't have a lot of flowers because I came through and kind of just cleaned this up a little bit. So I cut all of the snapdragon. Snapdragon are cool season plants. Um, and so it's starting to get really warm around here. So I cut most of them back, um, but they're beautiful flowers in their season. You have a candy cane zinnia beautiful and my first dahlia i brought a mix of seeds so i don't know what they're gonna look like but it's beautiful i love dahlias the hollyhocks are still growing got another zinnia here uh, teddy bear sunflower down there calendula milkweed good for the butterflies there's another dahlia that's probably going to throw something there are um echinacea in this bed bachelor's buttons that are trying to take over more calendula which i'm going to go ahead and harvest that it's early in the morning i harvest those pretty often and pretty heavily i'm going to use them for things for my skin and look at this pretty nasturtium. It's only one, but it's beautiful. I love, I mean, everything's beautiful. That's all I say my whole time is it's beautiful. <laughs> Some more hollyhocks right there. Another dahlia will be making its appearance into the world. Pretty excited to see what that's gonna be. More zinnias back here. They're the small ones, but they're supposed to be bigger. I think there's probably too much going on in this bed, but for this year, that's what's what it what it is. There's another zinnia back there. Across from the flower bed, you have ginger mint. Not gonna eat that. It's just gonna I'm just gonna let it flower. Uh, this is another mint, maybe uh, sweet mint. I'm not sure of the exact varieties of them all. The chamomile. 
the chamomile seems to be dying back. But I put new plants in this year, so when those die back, I would imagine these other plants will take over. Lemon balm, harvest that last week. And over here is a Cherokee purple. And there are tomatoes on that one. Beside it is more mint. That's oregano. And this is all mint. Oh, look at this gumfrina. It's a very pretty flower. I, my first time growing it, it's beautiful. So the sun is out and I am going in the house. Um, this is a pretty lengthy video this week, but I was hoping not to miss anything and to give you a full garden tour. And as I am recording this ending, I am remembering that I missed the beets, which aren't growing much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Um, and so I will see you all on Wednesday. Uh, but that is the garden in June. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram over at Miss MS Asia Spratly, where I post about the things going on in the garden pretty much every day. Bye.